All right. So I just wanted to put out a quick reminder to stop scheming. And I know that Brett and I, we put out a video a little while ago about this very topic, or we at least covered this topic about scheming, right? And you might be asking yourself, what is scheming? So it's something that I've actually seen a lot of, especially in the pickup industry, a ton of schemers in the pickup industry, also in the entrepreneurship space, uh, and really any area of your life, especially where there's a goal that you want to achieve. A lot of times what you'll find is a lot of schemers. And so let me actually talk about what that means. And Brett is actually the one that brought it to my attention initially, where, you know, it's an idea that I already was sort of familiar with, but I think he was really eloquent in describing exactly this idea. And it's, it's actually come to light quite a bit. And it's funny because even with my closest friends, we'll call each other out on whether we're scheming or not. So basically it comes from actually the dark night and there's a scene where uh, the Joker, you know, he's, I, I'm trying to remember exactly the scene. Brett describes it really well, but basically the Joker says that everyone else, they're just scheming, right? Everyone is scheming. And the Joker, the reason why he does what he does, I'm not saying that necessarily, you know, you want to be the Joker and just cause a bunch of chaos, but I think there's really interesting lessons or implications from some of the things that he says. And Brett, once again, really brought this to my attention of if you look, if you actually analyze the character of the Joker in that movie, it's really interesting some of the things he says, right? In spite of the fact that he's a villain, and of course, I'm not condoning that you just go out and, and burn a bunch of buildings down or, or go out and, and kill people, obviously, that, that would be terrible. Um, but the idea is that most people are confined by the limitations that they have on themselves because of society. There's these societal limitations of pressures that are placed upon us. And it's our decision of whether we want to fall into that or not. And I've talked about this briefly. I actually talked about this, talked about this recently in the Patreon group about bending reality. I actually think that it comes into play as well. It's Here's another idea. It's it's like we, we basically all have a frame, right? This is an idea that comes from NLP. We all have a frame. And we can be influenced by other frames. And when you have a collision of frames, whoever has the most conviction around what it is that their frame is, they're the ones that influence the other person. So for example, in the sales conversation, if the salesperson has more conviction about their product or service than the prospect, then they're going to be able to influence that prospect and the prospect is going to buy. Same sort of thing happens when it comes to pickup, right? Or, or dating or and you, you know, your social life where you're talking to someone and whoever has more conviction around who it is that they are, confidence, as if you will, whoever has more confidence and conviction around who they are is going to be able to influence the other person. Now, sometimes it can be contextual as well, because sometimes if you have a lot of co confidence or conviction in a certain area, like let's say I'm an expert at a certain sport or an expert at a certain industry, then I can most likely influence people within that context, right? So let's say I'm an expert at, well, you know, Ultimate Frisbee, for example. Let's say you don't really play Ultimate Frisbee. I, of course, have played a lot of Ultimate Frisbee in my life at a very high level. And so and if we're talking about Ultimate Frisbee, most likely you're going to, de going to defer to my expertise and I'm going to be able to influence you uh, when it comes to that that realm of expertise. But uh, let's say you're an expert at skiing, for example, and you know I've actually never skied. Uh, I've snowboarded one time, but I haven't ever really skied. I don't know much about it. And so if we had a discussion about skiing and you came to me and you're talking about skiing, then most likely I'm going to be influenced by you. So it can have some context. Now, when it comes to scheming, here's the thing is a lot of people are influenced by society, right? They're influenced by the outside pressures of life and they're, they're unable to really stand firm in what, is it, what it is that they truly want. And so what happens is out of fear, out of fear, all these thoughts start racing. 
So an example when it comes to dating is if you see a girl you want to talk to and you have that emotional resistance, that those feelings that come up, then you stop yourself from going over and talking to, to that person because you're thinking, you have all these thoughts that come to your head of, oh, you know, it needs to be this situation. Oh, I need to do this. What should I say? What should I do? You start to try to plan it out in advance. And this is what a lot of pickup guys, I saw a lot of pickup guys would do this. And they would try to plan out the interaction before it even happens. Same thing in business. Right? People try to create their these complex business plans, these ideas, before they even go out and try to make a sale, before they even bring in their first dollar. And they have these grand visions of, of where they want to take the business, but they haven't actually done business. Right? And doing business is really transacting, making that first transaction. So I've seen it in both aspects and also you could probably say the same thing when it comes to health you know someone's trying to lose weight let's say and they're trying to research what is the best diet what is the best workout plan and they're spending hours upon hours upon hours researching these things watching videos and going through content before they even step on before they even go into the gym or before they even start eating healthier they they want to make sure that all their ducks in a row are in a row first before they even go and take action right the reason i'm talking about this is because i've seen this recently especially um especially in the examples of of business and and dating right because a lot of guys sometimes come to ask me questions and they'll ask really interesting questions but they're very very theoretical and for me, I like to talk in terms of actual experience. And this actually falls in alignment with the last piece of content that I put out around going out and getting rejected 100 times before you actually do the research, right? So it's, it's flipping it on his head. And the idea behind that is when you're speaking from a place of experience, even though you might not have had success yet, when you're speaking from a place of experience is a lot more respected. And it has a lot more weight to it, right? And I can tell right away whether someone is speaking from theory or, or experience. And I'm guilty of this as well. In the past, I, I would speak a lot based on my theory of how I think things should work. But now I'm very careful talking about only, only talking about things that I have experience in. So if I haven't done it, then I won't talk about how to do it. Of course, I stay away from that, right? So I only really talk about areas that I personally have experienced. And, um, and I think that's, for me, that's been a, a very important principle to stand by because it's just different. It's a different level of information when uh, it, it's coming from experience than if it's coming from theory. And I think this is actually important to acknowledge as well is that they can look very similar, right? Some people are really good at faking that they have experience in a certain area. But then when they try to lead someone through the process of teaching it to someone else, or when they try to teach it to someone else, then they're not effectively, able, they're not effectively, uh, they can't help that other person get results because they actually haven't gone through the process themselves. Now, I'm all, something I've also noticed, though, is that in some cases, people can be really good technicians, but they're not the best coaches. And I've you know, kind of touched on this in the past. It's kind of like the e-myth by Michael, Erber, uh, Michael Gerber, where he talks about how there's entrepreneurs, technicians, and uh, managers. And some people are just really good at doing the thing, but they're not great at teaching what it is that they're doing. Some people are really good at teaching, but you know they're, they're just okay at actually doing the thing. Um, and then you have entrepreneurs, but I'm mostly talking about those two categories of technician and manager. And, uh, and for me, what I've noticed is, yes, I'm able to do the thing and I can definitely hold my own, but, um, but as a point of self-awareness, I tend to be a better coach than I am a, a technician. That's just me being totally honest and open here, right? And vulnerable. Um, but that being said, so the main point here is just don't be a schemer, right? Stop scheming if you're trying to, and basically what that means is if you're trying to come up with all these complex ways of doing things before you've actually gone out and done the thing. So you, you're you coming up with all these theories about how you should go approach, about how you should, <clears throat> about how the interaction should work before you actually go out and talk to a hundred people. Or if you have all these complex plans about 
your marketing ideas and all these things. Um, you're talking about all these uh, abstract strategies before you actually go out and collect your first dollar. Then it's coming from a completely different place. You're scheming, right? It, your your uh, your experience, your lack of experience is showing, and eventually, what will happen is, you know, there's a term that a lot of times people would use in the past called keyboard jockeys, and essentially, that's what you are is a keyboard jockey. So anyway, I'm just putting this word out there just to to motivate um, and to inspire, really. If you're in a place right now where you feel like you're scheming and the thing is i get into this place sometimes myself so if you are in that place right now don't you don't have to um criticize yourself or you don't have to do all these things just acknowledge where you're at be self-aware and then you have a choice on whether you want to do something about it or not right it's up to you and some people would rather take a slower pace a more gradual play, play, uh, pace and I don't judge that person. I think each person has their own journey, right? So um, I'm just putting that message out there in case you are in a position right now where you do feel like you're ready to take action, but you haven't been. And I'm just giving a bit of words of encouragement here. For people that don't feel like they're ready to take a plunge into taking action, you don't have to force yourself. If it, feel, if it feels out of alignment with, with your intuition, with you know maybe you feel like this is not my time right now, I feel like I'm supposed to be waiting, then as long as that's coming from a place of true intuition and not just from a place of emotional comfort, because there's actually a difference there, right? And if, if you don't know the difference, then I invite you to consider exploring how to connect deeper with your emotions, right? And I'm not saying about, you know, you don't have to just cry all the time and things like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying having a deeper connection with who you are. Being more honest with yourself internally. Being more honest with yourself internally and also externally with other people as well. And sometimes what that requires is, you know, there's that concept of radical honesty. And I know Brad Blanton, he talks about how to be rad radically honest with other people. I think that starts with being radically honest with yourself first. And sometimes, a lot of times, people aren't radically honest with themselves. They're not looking themselves in the mirror and they're not seeing exactly what's going on there's a lack of self-awareness there's blind spots and i think you know most people have blind spots i'm sure i also have blind spots and i'm not aware of what they are because they're blind spots right by definition um but i think it also requires a degree of humility to acknowledge that that exists as well it's kind of like what socrates would say and he said he's the wisest man in athens because he admits that he knows nothing so Anyway, hopefully this was insightful for you and helpful. Go out there and instead of scheming, I invite you to, to actually go out and move towards getting more experience in whatever realm that you're focusing right now. I'll talk to you later. Take care.